Hi there, this is the first in the series of topic videos covering aspects of monetary policy in the UK economy, but also we'll look at monetary policy in other economies as well. But in this introductory video, we're just going to look at the overview of what monetary policy is and a little bit of history of how monetary policy has worked in the UK in recent times. So monetary policy is perhaps the dominant means of macroeconomic demand side policies. It involves changes in interest rates, the supply of money and credit from the banking system, and critically also changes in exchange rates to influence the economy. So there are many different aspects of monetary policy. We'll be focusing on market interest rates, for example, how changes in savings and lending rates affect the decisions of consumers and businesses. We'll focus in future topic videos on bank lending and credit creation, important aspects of monetary policy. We'll also look at the economics of exchange rates and inflation targets. In the UK, the Bank of England has been, has been set a, a CPI inflation target for 2%. In other words, the annual change in consumer prices is hopefully kept to a 2% limit. Uh, crucial to monetary policy is the role of the Bank of England, the UK's central bank, and we'll look at that in a future topic video. Keep in mind also that uh, the UK is still part of the European Union and 19 members of the 28 group nations of the EU are under the auspices of the European Central Bank, which operates monetary policy for the European zone. A quick brief history of where monetary policy in the UK has, has headed in recent times. In the 1980s, there was a strong belief in the theory of monetarism. The idea that inflation was a monetary phenomenon and that, was the, and that inflation was best controlled by the use of money supply targets. In the late 1980s, a, a narrow belief in controlling the money supply gave way to uh, an emphasis on uh, controlling the exchange rate as a way of keeping inflation in check. Indeed, in the late 1980s, the British government started to shadow the German Deutschmark, which at the time was Europe's largest economy and also the lowest inflation economy. From 1990 to 92, the UK had a short-lived membership of the exchange rate mechanism. This was a system of semi-fixed exchange rates. Uh, when Britain joined uh, the ERM in um, 1990, we tried to fix the pound. We just tried to peg our exchange rate to two Deutschmarks 95 against the pound. Britain fell out of the exchange rate mechanism in September 1992. Uh, from September 1992, after the pound was devalued, Britain moved back to a system of floating exchange rates where the value of the pound on the foreign exchange markets was left to the markets to decide. From 1992 through to 1997, though, the government kept control over the setting of interest rates. There was, it was the job of the Chancellor and the Treasury to set the base rate of interest for the wider economy. And then in 1997, with the election of a new Labour government, the Bank of England was made independent of government. The bank was given operational independence. A monetary policy committee was set up, comprising nine people. And it's their job each month to look at the macro economy and consider uh, whether or not to make a change in base interest rates. We'll do a separate topic video on the monetary policy committee and the decisions they take. So in the UK, the base rate of interest is set each month by the Monetary Policy Committee, or the MPC, and their job is to set interest rates in order to meet the government's uh, chosen inflation target, which is 2%. When the bank's interest rate changes, most other loans and savings rates in financial markets will also change too. But as you can tell, the Bank of England, at the time of producing this video, has left the base rate of interest unchanged at 0.5% since March 2009. Other interest rates, of course, were set by the markets. So the red line in this chart shows the base rate set by the Bank of England, whereas the blue line is the average effective mortgage rate, which is set, of course, in financial markets. There are thousands of different interest rates in a modern economy, so although we tend to focus on the base rate of interest, it's important to look at and be aware of what's happening, for example, to savings rates for deposits and lending rates on loans. 
So interest rates can range from overdrafts and, uh, and uh, bank loan rates to mortgages in the housing market, the interest rate you pay on your credit card, the interest rate that companies pay when they issue corporate bonds, and the Treasury yield, the interest rate on 5, 10, 20-year government debt. Current base rate is 0.5%, and typically a two-year variable rate mortgage is around 2, 2.5%, two uh, whereas a £10,000 unsecured loan will cost you around 5%. But clearly, since 2009, there's been a significant general fall in interest rates in the UK economy, as this chart shows. Here's a chart showing differences between savings and loan rates at the end of 2015. Site deposits are uh, deposits held in current accounts in banks uh, to which people have an immediate access. For example, drawing down their account using a debit card from an ATM machine. And typically, current account deposits pay a very low rate of interest at the moment of less than 1%. Time deposits are deposits where savers hold their money in an account for a period of time and they may risk losing some interest if they withdraw immediately. So time deposits typically pay a higher rate of interest, although as you can see, it's not significant. Credit card interest rates on average are around 10% in the UK. Unsecured loans are more expensive than secured loans because of course with a secured loan, the borrower is putting up some assets as collateral in case of non-payment. Here's a chart showing the average interest rates for different types of mortgage in 2014. Uh, SVR stands for Standard Variable Rate Mortgage. And you can see that interest rates in the housing market are pretty low at the moment, less than 5%, and a two-year fixed rate can be had for just under 2.5%. However, keep in mind that the big issue for many people is saving enough money to get a deposit on a mortgage. If you can do that, home loans are fairly cheap at the moment. Just to finish with, in this introduction to monetary policy, I'd like to make a distinction between an expansionary monetary policy and a contractionary or a deflationary policy. So when the central bank is operating an expansionary monetary policy, they are either cutting the level of interest rates in nominal or real terms, or they're taking measures, for example, to expand the supply of new credit from the banking system. And a key aspect of an expansionary monetary policy can also be a depreciation of the exchange rate. In other words, a fall in the external value of a country's currency. Deflationary policy is when monetary policy is squeezed. In other words, the Bank of England or a central bank is trying to control or reduce the growth of demand and thereby reduce inflationary pressure. So deflationary monetary policy is associated with higher interest rates, both on loans and the return to savings. It may be the case that the central bank tightens the supply of credit, for example, by requiring banks to hold more cash and to lend out less. And an appreciation of the exchange rate also counts as a deflationary or contractionary monetary policy. Okay, in future topic videos, we'll look at things like nominal and real interest rates. And we'll also look at the impact of changes in interest rates on the wider macro economy, together with policies such as quantitative easing. But this has just been an introduction to monetary policy, particularly in the UK. Thanks for joining.